Thank you. Well, thanks for, for braving the elements. Um, not a lot of Floridians come up north in January, certainly not in the, in the middle of our, the tail end of a blizzard, uh, but we are going to be out all the way through the, the end of the caucus tonight. We've worked all 99 counties over the course of the month, many months. We've built a great organization. We've got so many great people, uh, great Iowans who are locked and loaded, ready to go for us tonight, and I know we're on all these precincts and caucus locations. We've got great speakers, uh, and I know the undecided voters can have a, a lot of great information given them about our leadership. So for those of you who are going to caucus for us, thank you for doing that. Um, it really means a lot to, to Casey and me that you're doing it. Uh, for those of you who haven't made a decision, you know, we, we're asking for your vote. You're never going to have an opportunity uh, to have your vote pack as much of a punch as it will tonight. And we don't know how many people are going to be able to turn out uh, given the weather. There's a lot of people that didn't think that they necessarily were going to have a huge turnout anyways. And so you're talking about 186,000 people in 2016, maybe less than that, maybe significantly less than that. So if you're going out to caucus and if you bring a friend or two between now and then, that's going to make a big, big difference. And so take advantage of this opportunity uh, to, to change the trajectory of this country. Because, you know, we live in a country now where the media thinks they should just be able to pick candidates, uh, where pundits think they should be able to pick candidates. Uh, I think the people should be able to pick the candidates. I think Iowa should be able to weigh in. And once that happens, that's going to be, be a great thing. And you're going to be able to do things that are going to be very, very helpful. Now, um, you know, it's interesting because I, I think back my kids, you know, their first grade kindergarten, pre-K three, a month ago, they had never seen snow before. Uh, and so we, I remember we got into to Sioux City one night, and the next morning, uh, they wake up at like 5 a.m., and they start, you know, waking up uh, me and Casey because they saw snow on the ground. So they needed to go out and do that. They're throwing snowballs, and they had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I asked them, I said, you know, do you like the snow better than like the beach in Florida? They're like, yeah, we like the snow better. Uh, and I was like, so you don't, you don't want to live in Florida? They're like, no, we just want the snow in Florida. I'm like, doesn't work that way. But they were very, they like the snow. This time, with what's happened and the temperatures dropping, you know, I asked, um, you know, I asked my oldest daughter, I'm like, I'm like, so do you still prefer the snow uh, to what's in Florida? And she's like, you know, Daddy, I like the snow, but it is way too cold for me. And so they're here, and I think they're going to be, um, you know, happy to be. Uh, I mean, they're going to come with us to New Hampshire and South Carolina. Although, you know, New Hampshire at 30 degrees is going to feel balmy after being through here the last few days. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited about tonight. Um, uh, make your voice heard. Uh, we have an opportunity to really change the course of this country. We, we complain about the stuff that's going on. Uh, we see it. Uh, let's do something about it. And, and I think I'm the guy running who has a record of delivering on all his promises and actually bringing this stuff to fruition. Things that Republicans have been talking about for years and years and years. We've gotten it all done in the state of Florida. Your governor Reynolds, Kim Reynolds, who's endorsed me, has gotten it done for the people of Iowa. That's the type of leadership that we need. Uh, it's not about constantly complaining and then never following through on anything. But I'll tell you this, you know, Donald Trump yesterday, he's out attacking Governor Reynolds. Uh, why is he attacking her? Did she do anything? I mean, did she, was she moving left on issues? Was she not following through? No, it has nothing to do with that. He's just mad that she endorsed me and not him. So what's his response? His response is just to trash her. That's not good leadership. Uh, you should want Republicans to do well. Uh, I don't care if there's a governor that hasn't endorsed me. If they're doing a good job, ultimately it's not about you. It's about the people and serving the people. So uh, I'm proud that, that Governor Reynolds has endorsed me, and I don't understand why you would try to, to attack her just because she didn't bend the knee to you. She's delivered on all of her promises. Uh, and she deserves support, and she deserves uh, our respect for doing that. And honestly, you know, Donald Trump could have delivered on the wall and on draining the swamp and on holding Hillary accountable and on cutting debt. He didn't deliver on any of that. Um, and so that's why we need somebody like me to go in there and actually get this stuff done. Don't just tweet about it. Get the job done. And we are going to do that uh, starting in January 20th, 2025. And it's important because if we don't do it now, when are we going to have an opportunity to do it? I mean, I think 24 
uh, is a time for choosing for this country. I think it's a pivot point in our history. If we continue to go down this road, I think it's going to be very difficult for us uh, to pull ourselves out of this mess. Um, and it's not going to be something you're just going to be able to solve in the 2028 election. On the other hand, uh, if we do it right, uh, and you have a president like me that will be able to serve for, for two full terms, be able to do the things that we know need to be done. That's not just what will happen over the next four, eight, four to eight years. Uh, that will leave a legacy that will last a quarter century or more. Uh, and it will put this country on a different plane, a different pathway. It will be a pathway to success. It will be a pathway to freedom. So this is our time to be able to choose that. Um, and we need somebody that's going to be able to beat the Democrats. I mean, we've beaten the Democrats on everything in Florida, obviously in the elections. You know, we beat them on school choice, beat the teachers unions. We beat Soros on crime. We beat Fauci on COVID. Uh, we beat the left on uh, banning China from purchasing land in our state. Issue after issue, uh, we've been able to get it done. It's also important to, you know, how do you conceive of your role um, as president? And I think this is true for any elected official, but certainly for president. You know, you're, you get elected to, you're not a ruler over the people. You're a servant of the people. You come from the people. God is the ruler. We are here to serve. So, so it impacts how you see uh, your job. Uh, in my job, and we faced this during COVID, uh, when we had, um, when we were fighting against the lockdowns and fighting against the school closures and making sure our kids were in school, fighting against mandates, all those things, it was not popular with the media, with the left, with the bureaucracy, or at the time the Trump administration who had Fauci in charge. Um, and I was getting hit from all sides on this, kind of like I get hit now. Uh, but that was that was what was happening. And people were telling me, you know. Uh, you need you may need to do something different because I know you believe you're right, but but politically you're just you're getting you're taking on a lot of water, um, and, and people were advising me to maybe reverse course for political purposes. But you know, a leader has got to be more concerned with protecting the freedom and the jobs of the people that he represents than he is about protecting his own political high. And so I resolved to do the right thing. Uh, to make sure that I was leading uh, for the best interests of my folks um, and let the political chips fall where they may. Uh, you need a president that's going to dig in and fight for you uh, even when it's not easy and even when you're going to have to take on incoming, uh, when you're going to have to take the flack, you've got to be willing to do that in order to do what's right for the people that you represent. And, and that's what you can count on for me. Um, it's easy to lead when the wind's at your back. Um, it's a little bit harder when, when that wins in your face, when you've got a lot of incoming coming your way then, that's when you really got to dig deep uh, and make the decisions about what you're going to do. And what you can count on me is, you know, when the chips are down, when you need someone to stand up for you, you know, I will be there and I'll be fighting for you. And I'll fight back against all these people that are causing all these problems. I'm proud that we've uh, we've done Iowa right in terms of how you're supposed to approach this caucus. I, you know, I visited all 99 counties. Uh, we did events in all 99 counties. We took questions from people all up and down this state. Uh, we, of course, participated in debates, and we did even televised town halls. I think we did three of those in Iowa in the last month, um, you know, one on Fox and two on CNN. And, and we've organized these counties. We've got people that are in these precincts that are working for us. We've got uh, all these people that are going to be speaking. I've had people come from all across the country just to volunteer to buy a plane ticket. And going into Iowa now is not cheap because of the caucus. So they're buying a plane ticket, buying a hotel, buying a, renting, renting a car, doing that, coming so that they can go knock on people's doors in the middle of a blizzard or they can make phone calls to people telling them to go and or asking them to go and caucus for me. Uh, so I think that that should tell you, and some of these people I have not even met before. Maybe they were inspired about what we did to stand up for freedom during COVID. Some of them were inspired by us standing and protecting kids, even taking on Disney. And other people just think that, that I would be the best leader for the country. Uh, but to see them being willing to do that and feel so strongly uh, that they're going to go out and knock on doors in freezing temperatures, sub-zero temperatures, um, you know, that's a sign that, um, you know, that, that we're tapping into something. And we have an opportunity, I think, to do this all across the country. The other thing we have is I've got people who've done the same thing, pay their way, uh, 
volunteer who had served in our administration or who are continuing to serve in our administration, and they're taking time out to go do that. Uh, that should tell you something. Uh, you know, Donald Trump was president for four years. How many people that served in his administration are lining up to endorse him this time around or be willing to come here and knock on doors in sub-freezing temperatures? Not, not very many. Uh, for us, you know, pretty much everyone that's worked for us in a meaningful way, you know, they're doing this on their own volition, all hands on deck. They're going, they're going door to door. And, you know, you, you think about, you know, if you're somebody that's an Iowa Republican and someone from Miami knocks on your door in the middle of January and they say, I'm from Miami, you know, I want you, I'm asking you to support the governor. You know, that's pretty impactful to think you would leave 75 degree weather, pay thousands of dollars to be able to come up here just to be able to knock on doors and hand out literature and be able to uh, make the case uh, for why I should be the next president of the United States. So we've inspired that. Uh, and I think that that's important as you look forward. Having the humility as a leader means you know it's a team effort. You know, you're not gonna be able to do everything yourself. Yeah, you set the vision as president, you make the decisions, uh, but ultimately you need good people around you to be able to put this into practice in the White House, in the agencies. Uh, if we really want to return the government to we the people, we can't let the bureaucrats run amok anymore. Uh, we've got to go in there and regain control of this government. You've got to have hundreds and hundreds of really good people that are ready to go. So I think just seeing what's happened in Iowa, you could have confidence that we're going to be able to inspire people from all across this country. Because I'm not just going to recycle people from within inside Washington, D.C. to be in these important positions. Not, nothing's going to change if that's the case. You know, we're going to inspire people to come, you know, from Arizona, Iowa, Oklahoma, Florida, wherever. Bring your family, go to the nation's capital, serve two, four, six, eight years, whatever you can, then go back and, and live, live in the country after we've been able uh, to do a good job. Uh, that's the formula to be able to turn this country around. So, so I've been really humbled to see all the volunteers that have come in and done this. People seem to be having a lot of fun with it. Uh, people seem to think uh, that, um, you know, that I think they're turning or, or, or uh, confirming a lot of people uh, who were maybe on the fence and, and getting them to, to go out and, and, and caucus for us. Uh, so, so it's all really, really inspiring. So, so I thank everybody here for, for what you've been able to do uh, for us. Uh, if you haven't made a decision, I'm asking for your support. I can tell you this, the people that have voted for me uh, in Florida, uh, people that have voted against me in, in the primary in 2018, for example, a lot of times I'll have those people come up to me and say, boy, I'm glad I got that one wrong. You've done a great job, um, and I'm so happy that you've done that. I have people that didn't vote for me in the general election in 2018 who then voted for me in 2022, and they're just like, you earned, you earned my support. You know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I was on one side, and now you brought me over. Um, and that's the thing. You want somebody that is going to make, make bold promises, but then meet those promises and even over deliver. And that's what we did. So you can caucus. If you caucus for me, you know, that'll be a vote uh, down the line three, four, five, ten years in the future. You'll be able to look back and be proud uh, that you did it. It's my job as a leader to make sure I'm conducting myself in a way you can be proud of. It's my job as a president to get the job done. Um, and it's my promise to you uh, that no matter what happens, I will not let you down. Thank you all. God bless you.